Hey everybody, welcome back to Digital Charcuterie. Andrew Fantasia here. Thanks so much for coming. Today we are going to talk about DC Superheroes United, which man, it's a mouthful. I'm still getting used to saying that whole name. But the campaign on GameFound is about a week away now. Like we are ticking down to when it starts. This Friday they're going to have a big sort of video showing things off and We'll probably do a video here as well to kind of go over everything. But in the meantime, before they make any more announcements and possibly tip their hand just a bit more, what I wanted to do here was plain and simple, my wish list. Now I've already made my hypothetical three seasons of DC United. So like those are all there if you want to watch them, they're right here on this channel. But that's not what this is. This is much smaller. This is just me talking about my top five expansions that I would love to see in this game, and then my top 10 characters that I would love to see in this game. So before we get started with it, obviously all the YouTube stuff, right? If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up, give some love to the subscribe button if you haven't already, click the bell, and hey, if you're a fantasy fan by any chance, or you know somebody who likes swords and wizards and dark lords and people who shoot arrows at other people, well maybe you just might be the right person to check out my fantasy novel series, We Were Wizards. I wrote this, there's my name at the bottom as proof that I wrote it, and here are some words as proof that this is not just an empty book, all right? We Were Wizards is my, my baby. It's my, so far, my life's work. It hasn't been a very long life, but for what life I've had, this has been the work of it. Uh, and it's a fantasy novel that you can get on Amazon right now. That's right, Amazon has this in three different formats. The first one is this purple one, and then this one comes next. We Were Wizards. Check it out. I'll put a link in the description below for the Amazon page if you have a fantasy fan in your life that you want to make happy. There you go. We'll also be announcing the winner of our last What's That Movie contest. The winner already knows who they are and their prize is already on the way to them. Uh, the prize actually was a copy of We Were Wizards. And then we will be doing another round of What's That Movie at the end of this video. So stick around for that. Okay, let's get started. So to begin, we're gonna count down my top five uh, expansion boxes that I would most love to see in a DC Superheroes United campaign. Even if it's not this first one, you know, down the line, these are the boxes that would just get me the most excited. Starting with number five, and I think a lot of people will agree with me on this, Justice League Dark. The supernatural world of DC is as colorful and as vibrant and just as interesting as the Marvel one. And the Marvel one has not been touched, uh, barely been touched, I should say, in Marvel United. They've stepped up their game in Season 3 with people like Werewolf by Night and Elsa Bloodstone, etc. But that was why my whole hypothetical Season 4 of Marvel was all focused on Supernatural, because they really let that fall to the wayside. So I don't want to see DC make the same mistake. Justice League Dark is their core Supernatural team, and if we get that as a box, that means we're pretty much guaranteed characters like John Constantine and Dead Man, and most important of all, Swamp Thing, because everybody loves Swamp Thing, right? He's got to be in this game. The idea of doing that as a box, probably even having Eclipso as the villain in the box, because he's a good supernatural villain, or maybe somebody like Felix Faust. There's a lot of avenues they could take. Dr. Fate, right? You, you have a lot of choices to sort of pick and mix from, like you're at a, a, a bulk store to kind of toss together and put into this Justice League dark box, just to choose the best and brightest of DC's supernatural world. And, unless I'm mistaken, I think this is where Detective Chimp would fit comfortably. So, people like Meeple Monkey who want to see Detective Chimp, I'm right there with you. This is the box for him. So, number five, Justice League Dark. The number four box that I would absolutely love to see is a box based off of the very first comic book story I ever sort of became aware of and got invested in in my life. And that is the death and return of Superman. It was so big when it came out that it was kind of inescapable. Like I almost had no choice but to be aware of its presence and to be invested in it. I remember hearing that people even like Roseanne Barr were giving interviews and saying they were upset that Superman died. Like it was everywhere. Pop culture could not stop talking about it for a while. I remember my dad getting me The Adventures of Superman number 500, I think it was, the cover that's all green and it's got Superman and, and Pa Kent and it says the Man of Steel fights for his life and it's after Doomsday already killed him so Superman's already dead in this issue 
Uh, and it just kind of sets, it's a big, thick issue. It's long. And it sets the stage for Metropolis post-Superman and what that means and what that world looks like. It's just a lot of world building. And as a guy who writes fantasy, like that is catnip for me. I'm like, yes, yes, world building. Give it all to me. Give me all the world building. What that story ended up doing was introducing us to this world of the death of Superman that includes, you know, Steel, who would be like the number one character that I'm like, yes, let's put him in this box. We need Steel. Superboy, the, I think, Connor Kent Superboy, the one with the leather jacket who's like, hey, never call me Superboy, dude. I'm rad because it's the 90s. Shaw. Sure. That's Superboy. Then I think this is the very first appearance of Cyborg Superman, who went on to become an ongoing villain in places like the Green Lantern world, and even, I think, um, Sinestro War. I think in Sinestro War, he was one of the main villains. But Cyborg Superman became a heavy player. Same with the Eradicator, who I think would make a great anti-hero to pop into the box, right? The Eradicator Superman, who would kill people because he's like, oh, this is the only way to get justice. Uh, there's a lot going on in this story, and you could even, if you wanted to, you could even have an alternate skin Superman where he's got the mullet and the black suit, right? You could really have fun with a box like the Death and Return of Superman. There's a lot going on here. It's a big story, and I want to see a box of it because it's just pure nostalgia for me. The number three expansion box that I most want to see in DC Superheroes United, it's a super obvious one, but Arkham Asylum, right? I think it's almost a given that this is going to be a thing there's like maybe a one percent chance that it's not that, that's kind of why it's number three for me i think is because it would be a spectacular box uh but we kind of already know it's coming and just like they ended up doing with maximum carnage there are so many batman villains that it's also almost a sure thing that in seasons down the line we will continue to get more arkham asylums and most likely an arkham asylum assembled Right. If they don't do Arkham Asylum Assembled, I, like I, I don't understand why they wouldn't. Uh, and that, to me, is sort of the main thing I would want to see in this box. Like, it doesn't matter who is in it, because I know we're going to get all the Bat villains eventually, right? They're not going to leave anybody out. Uh, I'll talk about one or two that I definitely want to see the most in a minute here. But the Assembled mode is the most important, because it will end up being the definitive way in a board game. I'm sure there's been lots of Batman board games, but... If they do Assembled, it'll be the definitive way to have your own customizable rogues gallery Batman fight on a board game table. Like, it will be the ultimate way to be Batman in a board game. So, they cannot leave it out. There's a 1% chance they will, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to see it. But that's why it's just kind of sitting comfortably at number three. Number two expansion that I want to see the most is The Metal Men. I just love the Metal Men. I love this team so much. I just love the idea of the Metal Men and how how much fun they are and how they feel like such a, a goofy retro Silver Age kind of thing. But how easily you could take that concept and turn it into something a bit more modern and a bit more complex without sacrificing the integrity of its fun. Because it is still really fun. And the idea of a box, even though it probably wouldn't have any villains in it, that doesn't even matter. That's how much I want it because it would just be a box of all these crazy Metal Men characters and you could have Dr. Will Magnus in there as well. Uh, I don't even know what villains they fight, so you could toss a villain in there just for giggles, but it's those characters specifically that I would want. I would want that Metal Men box. And because of the nature of how they look, I wouldn't be surprised if Simon gets a little bit creative with the color schemes on the minis the way they did with somebody like Silver Surfer, right? So that would be something to look forward to as well. All right, my number one expansion that I need in DC Superheroes United. This is the... I am still unsure if financially I will be able to back this game, okay? That is still not a certainty for me. However, if this expansion gets announced this season, which it might not, but if it gets announced this season, I will take pains somehow to get that pledge. I will take pains to make sure that box arrives on my doorstep five years from now, the way things are going. Uh, and that is the Lantern Spectrum. I, I'm, I don't want just a box of Green Lanterns. Green Lanterns are fun, sure. Mm -mm. I want the Lantern Spectrum. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And hey, if you really want to make me happy, throw in black and white. Yes, please. 
right? You could have a Sinestro core character like Arkelo. Any Green Lantern will do in here. Saint Walker from the Blues. I think that's an obvious choice. Indigo 1. Star Sapphire, who would be a great anti-hero. Atrocitus would be a great villain. Larflees from the Orange Lantern, he would be a great villain, right? This would just be a gorgeous, gorgeous box, not only to look at, but the variety of the characters in it and the things that they can do. Oh my God, like just thinking about the sheer awesome colorfulness of Marvel United artwork and thinking about how the artist Edouard Guiton, how, how he would take that artwork and slap it onto the lantern spectrum. Like, take my money. Yeah, just take, there it is. It's all there. I want that on my table right now, please. So the lantern spectrum, my number one expansion choice for DC Superheroes United. Please make that happen. Pretty please. Okay, it's time to get into characters now. These are the top 10 characters that I would love to see in DC Superheroes United. And we're going to start with number 10, The Question. I always liked the concept of The Question before I even knew much about him. And then finally I saw, you know, Justice League Unlimited uh, where he shows up and we really just get the pure question goodness where he's this private detective who's also just a little bit cuckoo and he's obsessed with this conspiracy theory and he's got no face. That, to me, is a combination of things that I would want to see adapted to this game. Because first of all, that mini would be awesome, right? A little chibi guy with a hat and he's got no face at all and he's maybe got smoke around him. Like, first of all, that's just a gorgeous mini and the artwork would be great. But then on top of that, we have not seen a character like that yet in this game. A character who really doesn't have any powers. He's just sort of, he can disappear and reappear. He's very mysterious. And he's all about conspiracies and putting pieces together. So I would love to just see how they would adapt somebody like him, right? Would he be the kind of guy who can like peek at the master plan deck, maybe? Would he be the kind of guy who can mess with things on the, the storyline? So question. Come on, man, get in this game. Number nine is a character who I thought we would have already seen at least artwork for now, but we didn't. And that is Desaad, who is the evil vizier who whispers into the ear of Darkseid. One of Darkseid's uh, minions, one of his top cabal of henchmen. He's had multiple looks. I'm not a huge fan of how he looked in the Zack Snyder Justice League movie. But artwork like this, for example, I think is a perfect way to visually show off Dasad and how inhuman and just creepy and eerie he is. He's really just like this evil wizard. He's kind of like the DC equivalent of Ebony Ma, but just, in my opinion, way cooler looking than Ebony Ma. I want Dasad as a, a villain that you're able to face off against. And maybe at some point in the future, if we ever get a second version of Darkseid, he can be a henchman there. All right, number eight, the character that I would eighth most like to see in this campaign is my second favorite Batman villain and is a very long shot Batman villain. It's one you almost never see. So I am pretty certain we're not going to see him in this campaign. But if we do, I'll be very happy. And that is the ventriloquist. The ventriloquist, Arnold Wesker and his puppet Scarface. That is one of the most interesting characters in all of Gotham City in my opinion. I, I'm, I come from an acting background, like I'm a trained actor, I teach acting, and if I was asked if I could play any comic book character in a movie, if they were to say like, hey, Kevin Feige or James Gunn will cast you in any movie, who would you want to play? My immediate answer would be, I want to play the ventriloquist in a Batman movie. This guy is just fascinating in every sense of the word, he's fascinating. The fact that he can build this criminal empire on the foundation of like, yes, I'm a crazy person who thinks this this dummy is alive, but if you don't listen to me, I will kill you with the dummy. <laughs> there's, there's so much going on there. I love this dude. How he would be adapted for the United System is a challenge I'll leave up to people like Andrea. But yeah, Ventriloquist is somebody I would really just, it would make me so happy to see a chibi version of this guy in the game. Get him in there, please. All right, now we're going to my number seven most wanted character. And this is another member of Darkseid's evil cabal. Somebody else from Apocalypse who needs their presence in the game. And that is Miss Granny Goodness. 
Uh, she was voiced by Ed Asner in the cartoon, so that just gives you a glimpse of what this character is like if you don't already know Granny Goodness. I believe she leads the female Furies. Uh, I don't know too much about them, though. And she kind of hypnotizes people, if I remember right, uh, to make them willing, not willing, but sort of zombified followers of Darkseid, in a way. She would kind of say, like, follow Granny, Granny will take care of you, and then all of a sudden you're Dark Side Slave, and you're like, whoa, how did I get here? Granny goodness is just... <laughs> the fact that somebody as evil and, and tyrannical and serious as Dark Side has a henchman named Granny Goodness, like, that's just... That's one of the things I love about superhero comics, is just how silly they can get. Number six, the number six most wanted character for me, Ventriloquist is my second favorite Batman villain. Well, now I want my number one favorite Batman villain. And that's my boy, the Riddler. I kind of flip-flopped on where to put them on this list because Ventriloquist is a left-of-center pick and we might never see him. Riddler we're absolutely going to see in DC Superheroes United. It's a given. I wouldn't be surprised if he's the next character they announce. Like, that's how obvious Riddler is. However, I put him higher on my list because... I have high expectations for how they are going to adapt the Riddler's gameplay. How will they make Riddler different from someone like Arcade? Arcade made you feel like you're on a carnival ride. That was very fitting. Uh, Joker has the shell game thing. That's very fitting. Riddler. I mean, you can't have a bunch of cards with riddles because eventually we're going to know the answers to all those, right? So how do you do the Riddler in the United System? That's what I'm most excited for. Not so much the reveal of the character himself, because I know he's coming, but the reveal of his rules. What is his dashboard going to look like? What's he going to do? I am positive that this was a character that was trickier for the team to develop than they initially thought. I think he ended up being a big challenge, so I want to see what the fruits of that challenge were. So that's why he's so high on my list at number six. And now we get into the top five. My number five character that I'm most looking forward to seeing in this game is... Zatanna. She could also very well fit into the Justice League Dark box, because I think she was a big main player in Justice League Dark. But I mean, come on, it's, it's Zatanna. First of all, like, every little kid's first crush when they get into comic books, right? Zatanna's just beautiful. And then she's got her top hat, she's got magic tricks, she is just a great looking character, like her chibi's gonna look fun, and then a great character in terms of what she's gonna be able to bring to the table. She can probably disappear and make people reappear in other places. For those who don't know her, she's kind of like, just picture a typical magician on a stage, like with top hat and coattails and, and like the fishnet stockings and whatever, and she's like sawing people in half like that but she's a hero so she will have a very showmanship quality to her magic so that alone is going to be different from characters like say Wong or Doctor Strange who do magic through ancient finger stuff she is just more like ta-da here's a dove and also you know here's a thing that stops that villain she's going to be just fun just Seeing what her cards can do is just going to put a smile on my face. So that's why I want Zatanna at number five. And number four, this is someone, a villain, who I have seen tons of people mention in the comments. He's on everybody's radar, probably even Simon's radar. And it would have to be a very big radar because this is going to be a big boy. This is going to be Starro, the giant starfish alien man who's purple and he's got an eyeball in the center of him. And he just loves turning people into his unwilling minions. I think that the best way to go about doing Starro would probably be just his own box like Fin Fang Foom. In my second hypothetical season of DC United, I had him as the all-in bonus, just like Fin Fang Foom, right? He, he fits that niche so comfortably. I don't know how you make a chibi version of a character who does not have a head or arms and legs to begin with. I think it's just going to be a very basic big mini of just a star, right? That, that's all you need. It's not like it's complicated or anything like that. So let's get Starro in here. The idea of fighting Starro on my table just sounds so groovy, man. Let's do it. Now, when I tell you who number three is, you're going to say, well, Andrew, we already know that's coming. Like, we've, we've kind of been given the hint that it's coming. But I want to get a little specific about it, because my number three character is Sinestro. Now, we saw he's got a henchman card. Lex Luthor's got him in the, his League of Injustice, or whatever his thing is. I forget his team, the Injustice League or whatever. Sinestro's there. He's a henchman card. However, I have a specific desire for Sinestro. I want him to be an anti-hero. 
For two reasons. One, because his figure would be purple, just like him. Clean and simple. Number two is because a lot of the stories I've read, even though he's a horrible guy and he does horrible things, a lot of times Green Lanterns have had to grudgingly put aside their differences and work with him. Because uh, at the end of the day, or rather at the beginning of the day, he was one of the best Green Lanterns ever. He was known as the greatest Green Lantern in the galaxy until Hal Jordan came along with his boring vanilla self and was like, I guess I'm the best now. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not the biggest Hal Jordan fan. I like Jon Stewart. Sinestro, just every time he's on the page, he's the most interesting character on that page. In the Green Lantern universe, there's nobody who makes quite as big a ripple as him. And the moments where he has had to team up with the Green Lanterns to fight a bigger threat are some of the most exciting moments I've ever seen in those stories. So it would be a crime if he's only just a red character in this season. Uh, I really, really want a purple anti-hero Sinestro. Pretty please. So that's my number three. Now we get to my number two. And, and from this point on, number two and number one are the way that I was during the multiverse campaign where I was just like, God, it would be great to see the Hobgoblin, but I don't think we're going to ever see the Hobgoblin. And then, oh my God, we got the Hobgoblin, right? Hobgoblin was such a long shot. I was never expecting to see him. With my number two and number one characters, I feel the exact same way. They are long shots, but if I get them, if, if Simon announces, hey, here they are, I will leap up in my chair and go, oh! So my number two, uh, keeping in the Green Lantern universe, is my favorite Green Lantern hero, because uh, Sinestro is my favorite Green Lantern character, but my favorite Green Lantern hero is Kilowog. Kilowog, the Master at Arms, I think, is his, uh, or the Drill Sergeant of the Green Lantern Corps. He is the one who trains every rookie lantern, and he's just this big pink guy, and he's scary and huge and monstrous and really, really strict and tough, but he's got a heart of gold, and he kind of talks like this, and he's like, hey, Poozer, you gotta learn to use your ring. Kilowog gets overshadowed, right, because he's not one of the, the core Green Lanterns, even though he's in a lot of the stories. So I think there's a 50-50 chance we'll see him. I don't think he's as unlikely as I thought Hobgoblin was, but we might not get him this season. But if we do, oh boy, I'm going to be happy to see Kilowog. So he's, he's definitely the first of these two flags that I'm waving of like, oh my god, are we going to get this? Which leads me to my number one, the other flag. The other very unlikely character that if... I see pop up in this campaign, I will lose my mind. And I'm talking about the Superman villain, Mr. Mixius Pitlick. Uh, for for those who were like, oh, what did he just say? Uh, if, you're, if you're not familiar with this character, Mr. Mixius Pitlick is an interdimensional being. He's a Superman villain. He's magic. So that's how he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superman because Superman is not invulnerable to magic, right? Magic can really hurt him. He's a magic interdimensional being and he is basically all-powerful. Think of him like an evil genie. Like, he can do anything and, you know, snap his fingers and turn you into a giraffe. Like, he's just insanely powerful. The only way to defeat Mr. Mixius Pitlick, uh, and I'm going to put his name on the screen here so you can see what, uh, exactly how this works. The only way to defeat him is you have to trick him into either saying or spelling out his name backwards. So if you can get him to say Kultabzixim, or spell out Kultabzixim, uh, you have to trick him into doing it. And if you can accomplish that, it will banish him from your dimension. Uh, and then, you know, he won't be able to come back for a long, long time. So I can't even begin to imagine how they could possibly make him a, a DC United character. If I just have a gun to my head and I have to figure out how they would do it. I feel like his dashboard is one of those ones like Dormammu where he doesn't even have a health bar, right? You can't harm him. You can't just go punch him. Maybe he has like a, a little track with a cube and each square that the cube goes in is his name backwards. It's like K, L, P, whatever, right? And if you can get it all the way through to the M, you win and you banished him and he's gone. That's that's the only way I can think of. Maybe there's a way better, way more fun way to adapt Mr. Mixie's Pit Lick. But oh man, if I see him and Kilowog, either one of them, in this campaign. Simon will make me the happiest lad this side of whatever side of the Mississippi I'm on. Uh, <laughs> so that's my number one, Mr. Mixius Pitlick. And again, another mini with a little hat. He's got a little bowler hat. A lot of my minis have hats. Riddler, Questions, Atana, uh, and they're all slightly different. 
hats. I, I guess I just want like a haberdashery <laughs> edition of DC United. Uh, so that's my number one character. Let me know in the comments what characters and expansions you want to see and like who's the biggest long shot for you, right? For me, Mixius Pitlick is like the hobgoblin of it all where I'm just like, I'm never going to see him, but I really want to see him. Who is your version of that? That you don't think there's a chance in hell he'll show up or she'll show up, but if they do, you'll be a happy camper. Let me know in the comments. Now it's time to talk about what's that movie. So if you're unfamiliar with what's that movie, this is the little game we play. Here's how it works. I'm going to show you a combination of characters from Marvel United, two to four characters from Marvel United. Your job is to guess what movie I'm trying to talk about based on the actors who have played those characters. And you'll see what I mean when I show you the solution to the last puzzle. So last time I gave you these combinations and here are the answers. First I showed you Gamora, Thor, Hulk, and Spider-Man. The answer to this is J.J. Abrams 2009 reboot of Star Trek. Because in that one Zoe Saldana who played Gamora was in it. So was Chris Hemsworth, who plays Thor. Eric Bana, who played Hulk once upon a time. He was the villain. And Chris Pine has played Spider-Man in Into the Spider-Verse, and he was Captain Kirk. The next one I showed you was Captain Marvel, Captain America, and The Punisher. And the answer to this, this movie is Scott Pilgrim versus the World. That movie had Brie Larson in it, and it also had Chris Evans in it. And it had a cameo from Thomas Jane, who played the Punisher. He had a cameo as the vegan police officer in Scott Pilgrim. The next movie was War Machine, Storm, Juggernaut, and Wolverine. And the answer to that is the delightful early 2000s hacker movie Swordfish. In Swordfish, you can see Halle Berry and Hugh Jackman in leading roles. You can also see Don Cheadle, who plays War Machine, and Vinnie Jones, who plays the Juggernaut. The very British Juggernaut that we got in X-Men 3. And last but not least, Moon Knight, Thanos, and Drax. This was a pretty straightforward one. Dave Bautista, Josh Brolin, and Oscar Isaac were all in Dune. That's how the game works. Big congratulations to Born Ruthless 77 who was the first person to answer correctly in the comments last time. Born Ruthless got all of those answers correct. Uh, and I've already sent them a copy of We Were Wizards book one as a prize. So this time we're going to do things a little bit differently with how the contest works. I'm going to give you the four clues again, the four puzzles. But this time, instead of chiming in in the comments and being the first, I'm going to create a Google Forms and that Google Forms will be in the description of this video. All you need to do is go into the Google Forms and fill out the answers and then you'll be able to put your email as well so I can contact you. And then what I'll do is I'll compile the names of all the people who answered correctly and then I'll kind of put them on a, a wheel and spin the wheel and whoever ends up getting picked is the winner. Unless I only have one person who answers correctly, in which case, hey, half the work is done for us already. So with that being said, here is our fourth round of What's That Movie. And from here on in, it's getting a little more difficult. And once again, the prize will be a free copy of my book, We Were Wizards. So here we go. What's that movie? Puzzle number one, Nick Fury, Crossbones, and Juggernaut. The second movie is Punisher, Kingpin, Mockingbird, and Juggernaut again. Next movie, Ant-Man, Hulk, and Scarlet Spider. And finally, Vision, Dr. Octopus, and Magneto. So based on the actors who have played those characters, what movies am I talking about? Remember, lots of actors have played those characters outside of the mainstream, right? Just because you see Spider-Man, don't automatically think Tom Holland or Tobey Maguire. Sometimes Chris Pine voices him, right? Sometimes Yuri Lowenthal voices him. You might really have to dig deep for some of these. So those are the puzzles. And what's that movie? Fill out the Google form and we'll see who wins. Uh, we'll be back here in a few days to go over everything that Simon announced in the big announcement video for DC Superheroes United. Until then, my friends, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you here next time as we continue to make the wait for Marvel United Multiverse a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. See you next time.